Hey, oh man, never mind. Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this Sun. Oh, not Sunday. <laughs> I was going to introduce the Sunday <laughs> church program. Uh oh. <laughs> wow. You know what I have? <laughs> oh, okay. I had the other one in the back. I didn't know it was there. Uh, Mal Lisa is saying she didn't get the link either. Uh, Lisa, if you're listening to me in the chat room, go to Google Hangouts. That's where we're sending the link now. If you don't know how to get to Google Hangouts to access the link, then um, I guess we'll try to send it to your email. But uh, try, try, let us know if you're able to do that, okay, Sister Lisa? And Sister Paula also. Uh, okay, now let's start all over here since uh, we got a good uh, a laugh at my expense. And I deserved it. Um, uh, hello and uh, welcome to this Fellowship Friday for the Church of the Eternally Secure. I'm looking forward to this time with everybody tonight. Uh, I'm looking forward to all the, the people who will be joining uh, the panel. And remember, I, I think the theme of uh, these Fellowship Fridays is um, our thoughts, our problems, and our blessings. So that's what I'd like to know. I'd like to know what's on your mind uh, if there's any problems that maybe we can put our heads together and help each other. And also, let's not forget, uh, we should constantly be praising Jesus for all those blessings that we tend to take for granted. So, uh, uh, all right, I'm expecting a few more people. Uh, Sister Lisa, for the Most High Jesus, and uh, Paula, uh, uh, Bible Literalist. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if they're able to join us. We're going to try to get the link to them. So, all right, um, let's get started with uh, introductions here. Uh, as I see you from left to right on my screen, uh, got Jesus, that's Brother Dave. Dave, say hi to everybody, and, and if someone doesn't know you, tell them a little bit about what you're, you're doing on your channel, please. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Brother Dave here, just hanging out, fellowshipping with y'all on Friday. Just grateful for uh, grateful for everyone on the panel, grateful for everyone in the chat, all my brothers and sisters in Christ. Hopefully we uh, are edified tonight, uplifted. And Brother Luke, just so you know, uh, Sister Paula was saying that the call in Hangouts is not active. She doesn't see it, so you might have to email her the link along with Sister Lisa. Uh, but other than that, I'm just here hanging out hopefully to uh, help edify or be edified myself. And if you guys don't know who I am already, I have a YouTube channel. You can check out the videos. It's simply under Brother Dave. And uh, just welcome for everybody for coming. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Well, let me uh, ask Matthias then, since Matthias is uh, the one that's orchestrating everything, uh, the producer. Um, um, yeah, if you could just paste and send the link to their emails. I, they're, you should have the email address for both of them. And uh, also send it to Renee while you're at it too, because she's, that's the way she always gets it. And everybody needs to learn to get it the other way um, through the Hangouts. <clears throat> All right, now next we got uh, Brother Cripps. Say hi to everybody, who's Brother Cripps? Hey guys, uh, my name's Jason Cripps. I'm uh, part of a channel called True Story Live. Comes on Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I love doing these fellowships, uh, so I'm a part of this as well. And on the Wednesday night Bible study here on this channel and on um, Talking Doctrine on Monday night. So uh, I, I um, enjoy uh, doing the Bible studies. I enjoy the, the, the program I'm part of. Uh, it's more uh, discussions with the panel. And then uh, fellowship, especially. And uh, I uh, enjoyed last week, and so I'm here again. Also, I heard Paul was going to be on here, too. So I wanted to be a part of it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you, brother. Thank you for joining us. And uh, now we have a sister, Paula. We will always refer to her as Paula V. You, you also know her as um, Mrs. Vendito, I guess the wife of Matthias. Okay, Paula, say hi to everybody and tell, tell them what uh, your plans are on YouTube. Hi, everybody. Uh, good to be here. 
Um, I don't have a channel and I don't have any sort of plans. I'm just going where I feel the Lord is uh, telling me to go. So, right. but it's good to be here. Thanks, Luke, for inviting me. Yes. All right. Great. So, I uh, guess my challenge, um, everybody's challenge is uh, to uh, get to get used to um, uh, identifying uh, Paula V and regular Paula, Paula who is uh, a Bible literalist. <clears throat> now that we have two Paulas, two sister Paulas with us. Uh, and then I guess that's everybody here so far. Uh, we, we also did invite uh, uh, Renee, Lisa, and Paula. So Lisa just came on, Brother Luke. Lisa's Lisa, here. Lisa's here. Yeah. Oh, there she is. Okay. Yeah. Hi, hi, Lisa. Sister Lisa, welcome. Uh, uh, how did you end up finding that link? Did you, how, did you get it through the email or, or the uh, Google Hangouts? Lisa? I figured it out through the Google Hang. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, that, that's the way. I used to always just uh, paste it in an email and send it to everybody. And, uh, and then uh, um, now that we're doing this program a little bit differently, it just goes out through the Hangout. So that's, uh, we're hoping everybody can just learn to access it that way. It's very simple. Uh, Lisa, thanks for joining us. Looking forward to spending some fellowship time with you tonight. Um, some people may not know who you are, so introduce yourself to the viewers, please. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Lisa. My channel is For the Most High Jesus. I um, am just someone who likes to exhort the body of Christ and um, encourage believers in the faith. And if you don't mind, you can swing by and check out my channel when you get a chance. Yeah, amen, amen. Uh, I, I can not say, um, I really highly recommend you subscribe to Sister Lisa's channel. I can also say that about everybody here uh, on the panel. I hope everybody will subscribe to each other and everybody in the, uh, the chat room, make sure you, you subscribe to everybody. Um, okay, so that's all of us for now. So uh, let's, uh, let's, let me just open this up. And uh, if, if anybody has anything on their mind that is, oh, uh, Paula, Bible literalist, Matthias, if you're not aware, says she still doesn't have access to the link. Okay. Okay. Uh, I've got something on my mind, but I don't want to be the first to introduce something. So <clears throat> let me just ask anybody uh, who would like to speak first, if there's anything that is uh, on your mind, whether it's bothering you or you're excited about it, or it's a subject that you want us to discuss, feel free to, to bring it up now. Okay, I, guess I nominate I nominate Brother Dave because uh, he didn't say a whole lot last week, and he always has some interesting topics on his mind. Yeah, <laughs> well, Brother Dave is usually uh, eager eager with something, but uh, yeah, if you don't have something pressing that you've been thinking about that you want to discuss with us, then I'll I'll, I'll go ahead. But, but Brother Dave, do you uh, you have something um, you want to bring up for us to discuss? Well, I mean, there's a couple of different things that that have been floating around on my mind lately. Um, you know, I'd really like to eventually, I don't know if we can get to it tonight, but uh, I'd, event, I'd eventually like to talk about, um, who, oh my gosh, I don't know, I can't think of nothing. I got, literally, I can name like 10 things, which, well, hold on, give me one second. Okay, here, let me show you, Brother Dave, and, and everybody else, here's a, uh, this is a pen, pen, notepad, and this is a pen. I, I suggest you do what I do. When I have a thought, I make a note because otherwise, <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm ready to talk, I'll forget what I was going to say if I don't constantly make notes to myself. Brother Luke, I'd like to talk about the New Apostolic Reformation. Well, okay, we we can talk about that now. But I uh, first, you have for me at least, you'll have to define it. I don't know if anybody else is familiar with it. Go ahead. Well, it's not anything new, actually. It's been around for a while, but. It's really gaining a lot of popularity with uh, the younger generation. Um, it's a it's a a group of, of Christianity that holds to the uh, Kingdom Now theology, the Seven Mountain Mandates, um, a lot of exaltation of, of spiritual manifestations that don't really align with biblical manifestations. Um, 
I don't know if you, you know, it's kind of mixed in with the word of faith, the, the prosperity gospel, but it's really more emphasized on, um, you know, the spiritual side, spiritual manifestations. And it's uh, a lot of its big proponents are like Bethel. A lot of a lot of teachers come out of Bethel. Um, it's a lot of emphasis on modern day apostles and prophets and basically exalting, uh, quote unquote, spiritual manifestations. It's just really awkward, and I, you know, I just want to talk about that a little bit. I don't know if you ever heard of it, Luke. I'm sure the other people on the panel have heard of it. Uh, if you're not familiar no. with like Bethel Church or you know Hillsong things like that. No, I, I, I mean, I, I have heard the terms, but I don't know anything else other than just recognizing the term. So right. it's, uh, it's I'll, called I'll Domin like Dominionism or Dominion Now theology. I don't even know what Dominion now is and this is surprising to me because i mean I, i'll try to be modest um but if you go to my channel and look at the playlist you'll see that i have a over 60 playlists on a, a very wide range of theological subjects so it's it's not like i've uh, i haven't tried to expand and learn about all these things everything uh, as much as i can and yet uh surprisingly sometimes there's something new that i've never heard about before so i'm eager to learn about it so if you or anybody else uh, wants to tell me more about exactly what it is, and if you think it's a problem, tell me why it's a problem. All right. Does anybody else on the panel familiar with uh, the New Apostolic Reformation? Are you talking about, this is for the Most, Lisa for the Most High Jesus. Um, are you talking about where they believe that we're supposed to win, win the kingdoms of this world and literally turn them over to Jesus at the end? Yes. Yes, the seven mountain mandate. They want to take over entertainment, um, education, uh, you know, religion, um, where they basically believe that they're going to win the entire world to Christ so that then Christ can come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah and I, that's about the just I know of it is what they what they believe, you know, yeah. according to that. I, I couldn't speak too much on it. Yeah. Kingdom builders, too. Yeah. Um, that there we're we're supposed to build the kingdom and if we don't we're preventing christ from coming that right, right his coming is dependent on us taking over places of power back from satan and setting up the kingdom so that christ can return mm -hmm. yeah okay um uh, well that's a, i guess that's a little thumbnail sketch for for my benefit but uh yeah, I mean, but they teach, you know, they teach above and beyond what's in the scripture. They believe that, you know, the Bible is a is a guide, but that we need we need to depend on direct revelation from God. They believe that there's more revelation that God is giving to their quote unquote apostles and prophets that are not actually written in scripture. They build these conferences and these, uh, you know, pyramid schemes of people. Uh, you know, putting people in different places. They 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 claim that there's these different anointings, these different mantles. It's a lot of spiritual mumbo jumbo, is what it is. And and I and if you really get down deep into it, it's it's you know kind of like mixing Christianity with the occult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Mysticism. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, I would simply say I was going to say while you were speaking there. Uh, there you go. I mean, the moment people start detracting from the scriptures. And start saying, "Well, no, we have a new revelation." Don't, don't, don't even wait. Just, just pick up your Bible and go in the other direction because you're about to go into some serious error. Now, if the revelation can be shown in the Scripture, and you can find a second and third witness, and it's not contradicting the Bible, you might have something there. But when they start just pulling stuff you know, from the sky. And now we have all this new authority that's not even outlined in the scripture. Um, right. We have all these new miracles you never even seen before. And we can't really demonstrate it to you, but take our word for it and all that kind of stuff. No, that's not of God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, before we go any further with this uh, subject, uh, we want to recognize uh, Sister Paula Bible Literalist has been able to join us now. So uh, hi, Paula. Well, uh, maybe you're not aware of this, but we have two Paulas now, uh, Matthias's wife. Uh, so we're going to refer to her as Paula V, and you're just regular Paula, okay? Okay. It's always good to be regular. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. 
Go ahead, Doug. Uh, <laughs> introduce yourself. So some people are just getting to know you. Well, uh, my channel name is is pretty descriptive of what I do. I, I do Bible studies through the Bible. I have playlists on topic studies. Um, I have a couple of other things, cosmology and some DIY and nature videos, but that's what I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. Thanks for joining us. Uh, look forward to spending this time with you tonight. And uh, I'd like to ask Paula V uh, about the subject that uh, Brother Dave brought up. If you're familiar with it and have any, any input on that. Um, yeah, I heard about this a couple of months ago. Um, uh, initially, I was shocked. But then the more I think about it, it kind of makes sense because we're told at some point the whole world will worship the Antichrist as he claims to be God and sets himself up. So I always wonder, like, how is that going to happen when, you know, everybody's beliefs are so varied um, but this organization might be, you know, a big push in that direction. So it's not so shocking when I really think about the way that the world's going and what we're told is ahead of us. Um, but to, yeah, uh, take everything secular and sort of Christianize it, um, it's blurring the lines. Mm -hmm. That's an excellent okay. point. All right. Very good. I was going to ask the brother. That, Very truthful. Yeah, the brother that brought this topic up. I'm sorry, what's your name? Dave. Dave, brother Dave. Uh, I wanted to ask you uh, are they pushing to try to bring Unitarianism and everybody just come together yep. under Christ it's, as well? It's, it's, it's definitely rooted in uh, ecumenicalism. Uh, they want to, um, matter of fact, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Kenneth Copeland. I mean, I'm sure everyone is. But he is, uh, he's not necessarily directly involved, but he is one of the uh, quote-unquote figureheads that are trying to uh, bridge, you know, certain gaps between, you know, Catholicism and Christianity. And a few years ago, there was a huge festival in California called Azusa Now, and it was uh, Lou Engel, Todd White, uh, a couple other really big name uh, NAR people. And they literally like bowed on stage and kissed the foot of the uh, of the Catholic priest. It was uh, really wild, and they were talking about God's about to do a new move and uniting the world. So it, whatever Sister Paula V was saying, I believe that's the same exact spirit behind it that's going to push Christianity or future Christianity into this ecumenical world togetherness. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, the devil has the world and he, he definitely wants the church. That's one of the things he outlined in his five point plan there in Isaiah when he declares he'll yeah. be like the most high. He'd be and the thing is, is the they're not small, even though a lot of people have not heard of them. They are not small. They have planted thousands of churches all throughout uh, Asia, Europe and Africa, and they are pumping out thousands upon thousands of disciples every day. Yep. Okay, let me ask first, uh, I want to know a little bit more about them. I mean, I, you gave me a little brief sketch, but also I want to ask uh, Sister Paula, uh, we've been talking about this subject. Are you familiar with this subject? Do you have any thoughts on it? Me? Yeah, Sister Paula. Just, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard about it years ago, and it's, sometimes they change names. The same organizations will change names over the years, but... It's all, I think, could be racked up in dominionism, which, like, you know, there, you were, guys were describing while I was trying to find the link, is uh, basically having to take over the world so Jesus can come back, and it all uh -huh. depends on us. So, but yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's pretty much it. Luke, yeah. if you're not familiar with it, there's a guy by the name of C. Peter Wagner, who has since passed away, but he was coined the chief apostle of this movement. Uh, C. Peter Wagner, there was um, Kenneth Copeland's involved, Bill Johnson of Bethel, um, you know, the whole Hillsong Ministries are involved. Um, Patricia King, I don't know, she has like a broadcast, she's pretty popular, she's involved. TBN, the Trinity Broadcasting Network, supports a lot of these type of people. Mm -hmm. It's uh, making inroads, and these are the people, um, Todd White is another 
you know, he's he's not really as affiliated with them anymore. He's kind of broke off on his own, but he yeah. still kind of carries some of that ideology. Well, he's um, the one, he's the one uh, brother Dave, that you were talking about that was holding hands with the Catholic priest and saying there's that was out of Todd White's mouth. I saw I saw that as well. Yeah, and him, well, him and Lou Engel. Yeah, they Lou Engel's the one that got down on the ground and kissed his foot. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that yeah. was at the Azusa now, and I think 2016 or 17. Yeah, Todd White. It's called Lifestyle Christianity. That's his. That's his uh, website claim to fame. Lifestyle Christianity. And someone in the chat mentioned that he never brings up scripture, and that's true. His he's totally just the experience that he's had with Christ, and that we should have that same experience. This transcending, he quit everything all in one night, kind of kind of thing, and he uh, does the fake healing and the. The mm-hmm. parlor tricks with uh, lengthening legs and things like yep. that. Yep. He's been refuted so many times. There are videos out there, brother Luke. If you're interested in digging yeah. into it a little bit uh, more, well, uh, let me let me uh, pose a question to everybody uh, based on what I've heard so far. Uh, just learning about this and these people and what they're doing. Uh, we all we all agree that we we believe the Bible is true. It's our it's called an owner's manual. This is what we refer to to get truth and answers. Um, and um, I, I know that I don't understand everything in the Bible. Uh, I don't think anybody in the panel or watching now, I, I don't think you'll claim that you understand every verse in the Bible. Um, I know I've been wrong on a few things over the years. At least I, I my mind was changed, so I, I think I was wrong, and now I have a different position. So. Uh, I know I'm fallible, uh, but I've come to the conclusion that we don't have to be right about anything in the Bible. It's okay to be wrong about everything except uh, who is Jesus and how do I get saved? Uh, that's what is absolutely essential, and, and that's that should be our focus. It is our focus for everybody here, I'm sure. Um, but if someone is violating um, in, any, in any other way, uh, I, I would say that that would fall under uh, the liberty uh, that, that that we espouse. That um, uh, now, if their uh, if their position somehow overlaps, like when you say some of the things you've said, I'm thinking, well, maybe this is uh, a leading or, or a part of the position that says works are required for salvation. They yes, they definitely backload works, brother Luke. They backload works, they, and they also. Some of the bigger figureheads deny the deity of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yep. Well, see, that's the kind of, to me, all, all the other things you've said to me, even though I, it sounds weird and crazy and wrong, uh, unbiblical, um, those are those things, uh, okay, we can talk about them, but I, that doesn't really, really get my ire. What gets my ire is uh, violating these, any of these core doctrines. Right. And so, uh, yeah, if they're, I would say that if, if uh, they're, all their weird positions uh, somehow overlap and, and 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 destroy the core doctrines of faith alone and the deity of Christ. Then uh, we, uh, we we should definitely be uh, uh, speaking out against it. But I, I don't know. I, I don't know how big they could be. Uh, as I said, I'm huge. I'm pretty, I'm pretty. They are huge. Well, I, I don't know how I've been. In, 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 in <laughs> well, have you ever heard? Have you ever heard the names um, Joel's army? Or Ladder Rain. Heidi Baker. Heidi Baker, Bill Johnson. I've heard the term Ladder Rain, and I heard this Todd White. Todd White. Todd White, I've heard How about the name or the the name uh, Third Wave? Third Wave? No. No, no, I haven't. They even have a group group called the uh, Second Pentecost. No, I don't. I I guess you're going to realize that I'm not focusing any time on and these weird things right <laughs> uh, uh, what I do is I just keep keep my mind completely on what we're doing well on the deity of Christ brother Luke here's where you would would connect to it you know you, you mentioned a minute ago about you know if they're uh, going against the deity of Christ they they absolutely do uh, that constantly Um, Because in order to call themselves apostles, they have to prove in some way that Jesus was just man and and not man and God. And that they use scripture, they twist scripture to make it 
sound like that we can be exactly like the the apostles and disciples and have the same level of power that they have. See, now and that, that we, we yeah, that's right into there's, Christ. That's how you get my a, attention. That's how you get me all fired up. Is telling me that there's a group that's uh, teaching against the deity of Christ and, and works for salvation. Then, then of course you got my attention and you got my support. All the other things, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe that maybe some of these other things you brought up tonight are uh, more serious than I, my, my first impression. Uh, but as I said, I really believe. You know, I, if I'm wrong about this, there's something else in the Bible that is uh, okay to that you absolutely essential. You have to get right. Tell me, tell me now. But I think it's it's okay for us to be wrong about all of it, except for this identity of Jesus and how do I get saved. So uh, I, they, nothing else rises that level of importance. So I think it's okay to be wrong. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but they also, uh, well, there's an infamous video of Kenneth Copeland saying that he's God too. Kenneth Copeland part of this? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I know a lot of bad things about Kenneth Copeland. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, it was just an idea, brother Luke. I mean, I didn't know. I really, I, cu I couldn't even think of anything to talk about. I got there's so many things rolling through my mind. I, yeah, well, it's just right. something that I see a lot of younger people getting caught up in, and I and they get it, you know, they get enthused by the chasing of the spiritual experiences, and they get yeah. led right into this kind of doctrine. And so it was just kind of something I wanted to just, you know, make aware, bring a warning to. All right, well, that's good. I mean, I, every time that there's something new brought to my attention, I'm happy to learn about it, uh, but then. I also have to like weigh, weigh it out and say how how important, how urgent is this problem? And Amen. Uh, all right, um, I said anybody who having anything in their mind, let us know. We'll talk about it. But uh, I I have something on my mind, and I asked Matthias to post uh, some verses to to so I could ask your thoughts on this. So Matthias, can you post the verses I, I told you about earlier? Is that possible for you to do it? Luke 14, Luke 14, I think it was 7 through 11, but I, I, I didn't. Let me see. I, I got yep. it here. Luke right. 14, 7 through 11. Yeah, 7 through 11. Okay. As soon as you get it up, we'll, uh, uh, I want to get, let's, uh, let's discuss this portion of scriptures. I, I'm, I'm, everybody, we're all familiar with it. I know that everybody here in the panel has read through the Bible completely at least once and probably many, many times. So everybody has read this account. It's a parable. Uh, and uh, uh, But I, I want to get everybody's thoughts on it and tell you why I, it's on my mind tonight. If uh, you're going to be able to post it, Matthias? Is he still there? Okay, there it is. Okay. All right. That's kind of small uh, for me. Okay. I'll read it here. Everybody read along with me. Uh, and he put forth a parable to those which were, oops, it's not showing me now. Did it disappear? Okay. All right. Uh, and he put forth a parable to those which were bidden when he marked how they chose out the chief rooms, saying unto them, When thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thou be bidden of him. And he that bade thee and him come and say to thee, Give this man place, and thou begin with shame to take the lowest room. But when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room, that when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, Friend, go up higher, then shalt thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. 
Okay, let's all talk about what that means, uh, and uh, and then I'll give you the reason I'm I want to talk about it. Uh, anybody, feel free to go first. Well, from first glance, uh, as you read it, it just kind of brought to my mind just you know Jesus emphasizing the importance of you know uh, humility and not showing partiality to people. It kind of uh, registered in James where it says not to. Uh, you know, show, show partiality to those who seem, you know, rich or of the upper class while ignoring the one who seems to have less that's, uh, you know, in the back. So it kind of just jumped out to me. It's talking about humility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would add to that. I would agree with Brother Dave, and I would add to that, that it's uh, not so much about other people even, but it's about ourselves. Uh, this particular parable, I think he's, He's saying to us, uh, don't don't put yourself into a position. Don't exalt yourself into a higher position, but um, be lowly of mind and 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 um, be meek and situate yourself uh, in a humble uh, scenario um, in humility. And uh, don't exalt yourself because um, if we do that, then He will exalt us. He will uh, call us up to a higher room. And so that we can sit at the table, et cetera. Um, yeah, I, I get that too, uh, Brother Dave, uh, the idea of being humble and, and being in humility. Okay. Uh, I like other person's thoughts on this, but but uh, uh, can you relate that to, to uh, our lives today, here and now? Anybody? Um, well, it kind of makes me feel like Okay, let's say if you go to a, uh, a baseball game or you go to a football game, uh, you know, those who those who can get closest to the action are, you know, looked upon as like more worthy or more, you know, just more important, um, you know, versus those who have to sit in the nosebleeds. But yet there's people in the nosebleeds that are very honorable. I don't know. It just it kind of seems like it's... Um, you know, because at the end of the scripture, when it says, you know, humble yourself and he will exalt you, it reminds me of the uh, a verse in Peter when it says, you know, humble yourself, he'll exalt you in due time. I would say, like, for modern day, it we look at people or we show favoritism or partiality to people who we think, you know, are, are of a higher status or, or more financially secure or a higher prestige. Um, and yet we seem to like turn our back on those who seem less than when, when I think, you know, those, we, when the partiality is shown, you know, we should be honorable unto all, whether they have, or they don't have, I don't know. That's what I'm getting from it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sorry, uh, brother Luke, where are you guys at? Because, uh, I got disconnected. Okay. We're Luke 14, seven through 11. Okay. Thank you. The parable about. The person that sat at the in the in the front and, and was told, "Wait, you, you should don't assume you're assuming too much. Uh, you're better off sitting in the back." And and then if if you're invited to go up front, then be be grateful for that, but don't make that assumption. Um, I, I think that's how I'm understanding it. Uh, so anybody, can you see? No, yeah. I, can't. I can't hear. I think we lost Luke. There you go. What? He's back. Who are you talking? Who who's who's back? Me? You? Yeah, you were frozen, brother. Oh, okay. God, didn't, well, didn't hear anything. Up? Didn't hear anything you just said. Well, all right. Well, what's the last thing you did hear me say? You were just asking for thoughts. Oh, okay. All right. So I'd like to know uh, how that parable, this parable is uh, Jesus asking us to, to ponder this parable and so that we can take the concepts in it and apply it to our lives. And so let's do that right now. Uh, and let's do it based on all of us right here, here and now. And, and, and we do have a, like a distinction in the parable, 
he says there's uh, an upper, uh, a chief room, and there's a uh, uh, lower room. There's the, there's the lowest room and there's a chief room. And the way I, I compare that to our congregation right now at this moment, is that we, we have the chief room is the, um, the, the panelists. Um, we, we're kind of, you see our faces, you hear our voices. We're up front. We're, we're, we're I don't want to say prominent, I'm, because I, I want to be, make sure everybody understands that Jesus, and I am also saying that one group is not more important than the other. But, one group seems to have more prominence. They are more visible, more vocal. Uh, they're out front, and and one group is 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 not hidden completely, but but uh, in a, in a lower uh, separate area. And so here we have a panel, and we have a chat room and a viewing audience. And uh, every person on this panel here tonight. Um, Every person has been invited by me uh, be, be based upon what I think are qualifications. Uh, being a Christian for a long time, uh, grown and matured in their spirituality and, and, uh, and in their biblical knowledge and their ability to teach. And so uh, each person is, is invited. People None of you people on the panel have contacted me and said, I want to be on the panel. I, I, please, will you put me on the panel? Um, and if someone did contact me, and some people have, and said, I want to be on the panel, to me, it's the same as in this parable where the person just wanted to put themselves in a position uh, instead of waiting to be called upon and elevated to that position. And uh, so the, to me, the, the, the right attitude would be to be, in, be content with being in the lower room, as it says in the parable. And, and then if you invited to go up to the chief room, as Jesus says, then, then how does it say it? Uh, but when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room that when he that bade thee cometh, he may say to thee, friend, go up higher. Then shall thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at me with, me, with thee. So each person in the panel that you're watching right now was in this lower room and bid, will you come to this chief room? They did, did not um, automatically just assume and, and say, and uh, believe that they were entitled to come and be in the chief room. But when the time came, they recognized that they should be in that chief room now. And um, so this is parable came to my mind uh, because there are, there are some people that are asking me to include them. And I, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. And this is the problem we had a couple of weeks ago uh, and why I was going to discontinue the program. And, and and with a lot of uh, advice from from everybody and, and prayer and, and thought put into it, uh, we came up with a way I thought that we could continue and make it work. Uh, and that is by selecting the people. And, and uh, uh, so that's how I relate this parable to what we're doing right now. Uh, anybody, if we want to give me any feedback uh, on that, well, I'd like your thoughts. I, I was just going to say a couple of things. One is the where it, just to clarify where it says rooms, the Greek word means a seat at the table at a banquet. So it's you know that that fits more with the the theme there. Just to clarify, but uh, it's the same teaching as Paul gave regarding the body of Christ, where some parts are more visible and don't need special treatment because they're publicly displayable other parts have to be protected and hidden and that's how the body has equality where the more prominent parts shouldn't think of themselves as you know the eye cannot say the hand i have no need of you but on the other hand uh some the more delicate parts need special care and 
this is exactly what Jesus is saying here as well. It, the, there's two themes, themes actually going on there. One is don't elevate yourself, which is exactly what you were saying. But the other is that by not elevating, God chooses who is, who is speaking or whatever, but that these are not really elevations. They're just different purposes, different spiritual gifts in the body of Christ. And those who are not on the panel shouldn't feel like second class and we shouldn't feel like first class. It's more just, these are our gifts. These are speaking gifts of some sort. And other people are prayer warriors or other people are good at managing the chat or something like that. This is how the body works. I think that's really all he's saying there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, well that's right. And I, and I think also, if I can interject, uh, it's also showing you not only to have a spirit of humility, because remember Jesus said uh, among the disciples, he said they were not to vie, to be lifted up, but rather they wanted to be great, that they needed to learn how to serve or become a servant. Yes. But when you walk in somewhere like at a banquet or something and you've been invited, and, you know, if they don't have your name at the seat that says reserved for and you walk up to the front and take a seat at the best table and the person who's throwing the party then walks in front of everyone else and asks you to go sit somewhere else, it's kind of an embarrassment. Whereas if you come in and you sit just in the back somewhere and then they come up to you and they say, hey, come on up here. I have a seat for you up here at the main table. You've been esteemed. You didn't do it of your own making and there's not going to be any embarrassment, you know, so it's, it's kind of a way to to teach us how to have the right attitude when we're approaching even things like this with the panel, you know, not to try to vie to be esteemed. And then there is no there is no embarrassment because if the person asks you and you can and you're willing and you're able, you do it and, then, and led by God. And if you can't or you, for whatever reason, are not able to, you know, then it's no harm, no foul kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. I appreciate uh, uh, Paula and uh, Lisa's uh, feedback on that. Uh, does anybody else want to want to say more about that? Yeah, not to put a capper on it, but verse 11 makes the point. Whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. And that 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 goes in line with a common theme throughout Scripture of just um, humbling ourselves uh, in general and uh, specifically as it comes to God, we're supposed to humble ourselves. Um, so it's, it's more of the same in line with Scripture and in context of... Uh, other things that are are said uh, in different <coughs> ways by different people. Yes. Okay. Amen. And How about Paul? Jesus, you know, Jesus reminds us that you know to even be, um, you know, brought up into a place uh, to be used that way or to or to be beneficial, you have to be willing to go down low and, and serve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'd like to ask Paul of Vies, could you give us your thoughts on this portion of scripture and my my concern and how I'm applying it? Um, yeah, the uh, that parable you read reminded me of Philippians 2, 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Um, and... I think that's that goes in line with the parable that we're supposed to um, think of others uh, greater than ourselves. And when you asked earlier for everyday examples, what came into my mind was being at the grocery store and you are headed toward the checkout and someone is headed towards the same one. Just, you know, staying back and allowing them to go first, you're sort of putting them in a you know, the first position or whatever, you're, you're thinking of them more than yourself, just a everyday example. And then um, how you liken the parable to this particular program was great. I didn't even think about that um, because I, I didn't ask you to come on. And I know people have asked you to come on and uh, I know that a lot of reasons why they ask to come on is because they also want to preach the gospel and they also have something important to say. But sometimes I think it might be because 
um, for not God-centered reasons to exalt themselves, like you were saying, because um, yeah. I see a lot of that on YouTube. YouTube is sort of like um, the new age celebrity kind of. Yeah. Um, my kids know YouTubers. They know them by name, like the way I used to know famous people's names when I was a kid. So there is um, a lot of desire in, in people to um, to be on a, a panel like this and and to basically exalt themselves. That's their their um, intention. But God says, you know, don't don't exalt yourself lower yourself and he will exalt you and he will do it in his time because a lot of times it's not when you'd like it to happen um and a lot of times with a lot of us it's not even necessarily something that you would have wanted amen um i think uh me personally i never wanted to be on <laughs> on youtube i did not want my voice to be recorded I, I i didn't want any of this and in fact it took almost two years of matthias having his own channel that i felt comfortable enough to even give my testimony and from then um god is just kind of opening this door where i'm not really all that crazy about it <laughs> Me personally, because I'm introverted, I'd like to stay in the background. But this is where he would like me to be. Um, and that's the best way to know if, you know, what you're doing is right, is if you follow where God would have you to be, not necessarily where you would like to be. Yeah. I like what you said too, Paul Levy, about um, not in our own time, but his time. And I think you're right. Sometimes, a lot of times, most times, it's not in our time, it's in his time. And uh, we have to know that his timing is way better than our timing. He's the, the, the God of timing and the God of time. Uh, and he's in and out of time. So he can see the beginning from the end. We all know that. And uh, we can't see anything. We see what's right in front of us. And even that we see uh, through a glass darkly. So it's all um, counting on his perception of things and waiting and trusting in him. Uh, it goes into a separate topic. But... Um, I appreciate what you said. Yeah, it's uh, also, um, what was I just thinking about? Oh, I heard a quote once uh, that goes, um, there's no panic in heaven. God, God's not in a hurry. So mm. if you're in a hurry, it's not, that's not, that's not the spirit working through you. Cause there's, mm -hmm. God's not in a hurry. He knows what he's doing. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh. Yes. Yeah, I love that. That's a wonderful thought. I hope I can, keep it remember it uh i don't mean remember it like my mind forgot it but, but remember to keep it in my mind and, and, and apply it and right daily use it and use it um, um okay i uh that was what was on my mind that i wanted to bring up and get everybody's thoughts uh and uh, and of course sometimes i'm afraid that uh i I, I, I'm going to come off in a, in a negative way and, and that people will, um, I, I will offend people or hurt their feelings somehow. And that's the, I, it's the thing that I worry the most about all the time. And this is one of the reasons years ago, many years ago, uh, I was seriously thinking of becoming a, a pastor. And uh, for that and many other reasons, uh, I had to rule it out because of the responsibility and the type of things that go along with it that I didn't feel that I, I could c cope with very well. And uh, I've been willing now, I've learned to be able to accept more responsibility. Like, okay, I've made a commitment that there's three times a week, my time is set aside to do these Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday programs. And uh, each time I made a commitment, it was a big question in my mind, can I make that kind of commitment? Uh, and and uh, if I make too many commitments, will it change from a love, a labor of love, to a resentment? I resent. I have to be there tonight, you know. And so I'm always trying to balance that, and also balance that. I I hate to have the role or the responsibility of having to say no to people, and and their feelings being hurt, but. Uh, 
I, as long as I'm hosting the program, I'm the one that has to make the decision. And, and with with other people's advice, I can be, get counseled. But I have to make the decision. So I don't like being in that position. I'm very uncomfortable with it. <laughs> um, but I'm doing the best I can. And I, if, if anybody's feelings are hurt because of some of the decisions I make, like who I'm inviting to be on the panel, uh, just forgive me, please. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. I'm just in, trying to make the best judgment I can. In, in fact, Brother Luke, in this area, I'll tie it into what uh, the other Paula said uh, earlier about um, people having different purposes and different talents, and, and I'm paraphrasing, different um, you know, gifts and talents. And some people, unfortunately, I mean, they may be talented in some areas, but they're not real good communicators. Um, so even aside from whatever Bible knowledge they may have uh, to qualify them in some way for this particular fellowship, um, they're, they're not really uh, good at being in a conversation. They, they interrupt and talk over other people and it, it, they just may not have the ability or the talent um, to be able to do that. And it's nothing wrong with them. I mean, maybe they're great at writing stuff down or being in the chat and typing things out, but they're, they're not really suited for that. It's not anything against them. And I certainly understand the position you're in because it's your So you're the one that decides, that has to put in the uncomfortable position of deciding for your channel what the parameters are. Um, and I'm, I'm glad you're sensitive to that, but a lot of times it's, it, it's a problem with the person. It's not so much a problem of you trying to set parameters to make it more enjoyable for all the listeners and to kind of have a, a good idea that the people that you're bringing on are going to be respectful and they're going to present their opinions. They're going to know a little bit about the Bible, like you said at the beginning of the, of, of the show, have some Bible knowledge and be trustworthy. Um, there's nothing wrong with having those standards, in my opinion, even though it's a difficult place to, to, for you to be in. Okay. All right. Amen. Thank you. I, uh, now I, I said that, uh, now this is not written in stone that we have to follow this format of, uh, let's talk about what's on our mind. Let's talk, share our problems and try to come to each other as aid. And let's also share, uh, the, the blessings and praise reports. So, I mean, we can go any direction that, that is called for, but, uh, with that in mind, I, I'd like to tell you, praise report. I'm very thankful. Last Friday, uh, I announced to the world that uh, my wife left town for a month and immediately I missed her very much. And uh, it was only after the, in the very first and second day of her being gone, I already felt this great loneliness being in this house all alone. And uh, I just want to thank people for caring. And uh, several people have called me and they made an effort to try to uh, give me some, some of their time, and, uh, it, and that meant a lot to me. I just got a text message from a brother in the chat room now that was very kind and, and encouraging. And uh, those things are, um, it's a great blessing to me. I, I, I know that I'm, I, sp I probably speak for everybody who's gone through this. Uh, we get a, a lot of criticism because 97% of the world disagrees with our theology. Uh, and so we get a, a lot of criticism, a lot of even attacks. And, uh, but when, when someone is a, it shares our faith and, and, and encourages another, uh, I don't think people understand the, the, the strength of that, the value of it. And it, it really helps me. I'm not, I'm not soliciting more. <laughs> when I say this, I'm always afraid people think I'm trying to solicit more kind words or something, but I'm just thanking you for those of you who did uh, make an effort to help me. All right. Uh, anybody else have a praise report? Well, my husband's surgeries are all done and he's doing well. Hmm. If, uh, just real briefly, he had stones in both kidneys that were too big to pass had to be surgically removed and one was infected causing terrible amounts of pain but got through that and uh our local church uh 
we did not request any kind of help, but they sent some money to cover lost days off because he had used all his days off. So that's a major praise. Um, we are facing probable bankruptcy for medical expenses, though, because our insurance ever since, quote unquote, Obamacare has been, you know, the only premium we can afford is um, having a very high deductible. And so we're being sued for part of that because we haven't been able to pay yet because we're paying one after the other all these years. So, but that's, we, we consider it in some way, we don't know a blessing in disguise because um, we have been wanting to downsize and move anyway. So we might be able to sell the house and pay off some things and move into an apartment somewhere. So it'll work out. It's just kind of a tough thing to go through, but I, I see something good God has planned in that. Mm -hmm. uh, Paula, I, I I don't recall on your channel if you have a, like a, 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 a donate button or a link to a place to donate uh, and contribute to your ministry. Or if you do, you, you, would you let everybody know how to go to it? I don't, but um, I, what I was going to do is wait until I talk to the lawyer next week and see what we need to do. And I also don't even know how much money we need yet. It's probably on the order of ten to $15,000. So um, depending on what the arrangements turn out to be, whether I need money or not, uh, if I do, if there's a, lo a large debt, then I will see, I could do PayPal or something. I, maybe I'll put a link on the channel, but I could monetize now that I'm over a thousand subs but you have to run ads and monetize before you can do super chat and Google takes 30%. So um, if I did something, it would probably either be a GoFundMe or PayPal or something like that. Yeah. All right. Well, make sure if you do something that you will bring it to our attention. We'll do. Uh, Thanks. Uh, you know, I may, if you know me very well, you might have noticed that in 11 years on YouTube, um, and all of these live programs, and I, I have never spoken about politics, and I and I'm not going to tonight. Uh, I, I and the politics is such a divisive subject uh, that uh, we've got enough things that we're dividing over biblically that uh, we certainly don't want to have that brought into our and, and poisonous uh, the disagreements over that. Uh, but I, I will say that um, I'm 60. Eight, uh, I'll be 69 in November, and I'm very thankful uh, that that we have a, a Medicare system for the senior citizens, uh, and there's a Medicaid system for um, poor people, and uh, I'm very thankful for that. And uh, I know that myself and a lot of the people who are my friends who are my age, uh, we would be up the creek without a paddle if we didn't have Social Security and Medicare. And I don't know how far away you are from that, Paula. You're probably quite a bit younger than me, you and your husband. But I'm, I'm thankful for that because uh, I've had brain surgery, three back surgeries, knee surgery, and quadruple bypass heart surgery most more recently. And uh, in and out of hospital many times over the last 10 years. Uh, and I've had almost zero payment to make, and that's what I wish for everybody. That's what I wish you had, Paula, your husband, and everybody else. Yeah, so, uh, nice. <laughs> I am, yeah. I'm in 61, so next year I can apply for Social Security at my earliest age, um, and that will help if, if we can get that, but um, the medical care is a really a big problem. It's, we're, we're the middle class that's being destroyed by that sort of thing, and um, not sure what we can do about it. This is the best insurance we can afford. So it used to be years ago we had 80-20 and, you know, where, where you would pay 20% of your expenses and out of pocket wasn't that bad. Now it's, I think it's, they treat each, they don't treat the family as one expense. They treat each individual has their own deductible and it's over 3000 per person per year. 
So an out-of-pocket maximum is over 6000 per person per year. So I, I don't know how people afford that because we certainly can't. Well, it, it, you're, you started off as a praise report. Your husband... Sorry. <laughs> no, I, let's not forget about that part of the, the discussion is that it's a praise report. Uh, it's successful. They treated him. And uh, that's what's most important. Um, I, I have a question, though. Um, I recently started stopped taking calcium as a supplement because I've learned that calcium is a, uh, contributes to heart problems and also it, it is a big factor in uh, kidney stones. So I don't know if he takes if he's ever taken calcium supplements, but uh, I think he should study that and I don't think you should take it if he does. Right. No, he doesn't. He, we did find out, uh, I noticed that every time he would have a problem, it would be after he went on a diet and the diet foods, it turns out, are high oxalate and his stones were analyzed and they're very high oxalate. So we've changed the diet to get rid of foods that are high in oxalates mm -hmm. and hopefully that will prevent those in the future. Okay. All right. Who else has a praise report? Come on. Somebody had some wonderful blessing recently, didn't you? Yeah, Anybody I did. Um, yeah, go ahead, Lisa. I, I don't want to give too much detail. I don't give away too much personal information, but um, literally had a situation where it was really difficult, extremely hard. It was a lot of hardship involved. And I just trusted God all the way through that, that process. And no, I do not consider myself a spiritual giant or nothing like that. Please don't read anything into it. It's just like it, I've been a believer since I was a child. So I have the attitude that Peter did when Jesus told the people that were around there. He said, you know, you had to eat his flesh and drink his blood and they didn't understand what he was saying and they said this is a hard saying who can hear it and they walked away and he looked at the 12 and he said will you two also go away and Peter said Lord to whom shall we go we know that you are that Christ and that you have the words of eternal life so I have nowhere else to go because I know all these other religions are fake <laughs> so <laughs> The only thing I can cling to is Jesus. It's not like that I have such great faith. It's just like, okay, Lord, what do we do now? <laughs> you know? So I was trusting the Lord because I was literally just worn out. I mean, literally worn down to like nothing. And I was seeking God. And in that situation, I had to go through some things, very difficult things. But the Lord kept me all the way through and then he set me up. And I was telling Sister Paula about this in a conversation I had with her that when I got to the end of it, and I'm really not fully at the end. I'm like getting towards the end, but I can look back and see the handiwork of God all throughout the situation. For example, I had um, where I had to be hospitalized briefly for uh something that came on acutely it just happened and i i went into the hospital and i'm thinking about like she's saying here you are you laying in the hospital bed and you're you're trying to get well and i was literally miserable i couldn't wait to get out of there and they approached me about the bill and they're showing me how much the bill was <laughs> the bill was thirty thousand dollars plus i had uh insurance through my employer but it didn't cover the whole thing and so the remaining was right around thirty five hundred dollars i did not have it i was like uh, i can't pay that i'll be honest with you so the lady said well somebody from our other department will come back and discuss this matter with you and gave me some documents to sign which i signed and about an hour later, this other lady comes in and she says, okay, fill this form out and we're going to see if we can get uh, get this taken care of for you. So I filled it out. And we went around for about three or four months. The hospital was cool. They weren't, you know, putting tons of pressure on me or anything. They went through their process. I had to jump through the hoops they asked you to go through. Long story short, get down to the end. 
not only did they take up the bill for the period that I was in the hospital and and absolve that, they took from the remainder of that year, which was last year, and paid the rest of my medical copay portion without me having to pay anything for the ongoing care that I had to receive. And all I did was trust God through the process, you know, and trust that as he said, he would give us our daily bread, that he would meet our need. And I knew he would, and he did. That's awesome. That's wonderful. Uh, now I'm, I don't, I must've missed uh, exactly how, what was the source of the money that came to you? The hospital forgave the the balance. Oh, yeah. They had a program at this particular hospital that if you couldn't pay it, they looked at your finances and they said, okay, you meet the criteria based on my yeah. situation. Yeah. They forgave that. And then yeah. not only did they forgive that, my ongoing care that had to be done, they paid for throughout the rest of the yeah. year. That's awesome. Well, maybe... Uh, um Sister Paula, maybe you can talk to the hospital and maybe they have some kind of a program uh, like Lisa benefit from. Yeah, I will definitely, you know, when I get the bills, I'll see what is left after. Insurance pays some things and uh, I'll apply for whatever I can get. And the problem is we, we're in those, we fall between the cracks. You know, we don't make enough to pay for these things, but we make a little too much to get aid. So... That's that's what we're usually dealing with. So, um, but we'll just wait and see. It may not be as bad as I think. Mm -hmm. I noticed that Hendrix asked earlier. It's been a while. I, uh, but I want to respond to it. Hendrix asked if, after we finish the Wednesday night Bible studies uh, on the Pauline epistles, if we can go to the uh, Peter's epistles. And <clears throat> it's too early to answer that question, Hendrix. Uh, we're on First Corinthians. So, so far we've done uh, Romans and we're in First Corinthians. We had a long ways to go to get through all of Paul's writings, uh, but then we'll figure out where we go after that. I can't decide right now. Um, all right, um, I'd like to know if uh, Brother Cripps has a, bl a blessing in his life that he wants to share with us. Uh, I always have like everyday blessings, but it's it it's nothing I don't think anyone's heard about. I I have a relationship that I'm very blessed by, and um, of course we've talked about it a lot on air. Uh, other than that, um, I'm just happy every day I wake up, and uh, I believe that as long as my heart beats and I'm my lungs still are processing air and all that, that he has a plan uh, for me to uh, act out and uh, he has a reason for me to be here. And so every day I wake up, I um, I know that he uh, has great things for me to learn and for me to grow and that he's gonna produce more fruit in my life. All those are good things. Um, uh, there's also circumstances and struggles uh, every day. Um, but uh, each day that I spend growing and changing and him transforming my uh, mind every day, leading me closer to him as I seek him uh, more and more and try to get to know him uh, better. Um, every day has things that I can rejoice in. Um, nothing really specific other than what I, what I just uh, shared. Okay. Uh, I, I know that we, we all tend to uh, just take for granted so many things all the time and we sometimes something profound happens and we recognize that what a great blessing we have but then the, just the everyday things just the fact that we we have uh, simple things like air and water and food and shelter and clothing just those most basic things sometimes we don't even consider how blessed we are and we need perspective sometimes. I'll tell you what gave me some perspective is I, I talk about my time in the hospitals uh, and all the things I've gone through, but I'll tell you what, it was good for me. Uh, it, uh, it is a lot of um, difficulty, uh, a lot of suffering, but I finally, at a late age in my life, began to develop empathy. 
I don't think I was empathetic before that. I, I, there were people I knew, friends and family members that had health problems, and I didn't really feel for them that much uh, because they, uh, I thought that they were kind of caused their own problems because of bad lifestyle they're living, uh, bad health habits, and eventually they're going to get sick from it. So I, they kind of, I don't want to say deserved it, but uh, that's what they get. And so uh, there wasn't um, empathy or sympathy on my part. And, and by me going through that, and especially the time I spent in hospitals watching other patients and, and uh, getting to talk to some of them. And, and I remember when I was getting out of the hospital, waiting to be released, I was in the hallway in a wheelchair and uh, I had all kinds of complications on the back surgery. Instead of one back surgery, I had to have three surgeries in the seven day period. And then I had six more months of complications, but I get ready to leave the hospital and I'm in the hallway and I see this woman walk into the room. Uh, apparently she was a doctor and she's talking to someone and I don't, I don't, I can't see who she was talking to, but the person sounded old and weak. And uh, the doctor said to them, uh, I'm sorry to tell you that uh, it, the test came back positive and it's terminal and uh, you probably have very little time left. And uh, that and many other things I saw finally made me uh, start being, actually thinking about other people's needs and problems instead of just my own. I'm done. Awesome. Um. I like how we learn uh, as we grow, as we change the transformation, he uses things in our life to uh, teach us. The, the, that's what you're saying. Um, I find it hard to imagine you without empathy, Brother Luke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I think, uh, well, there's a lot of things that uh, we all, I think, have these secrets in our, that are, uh, even just in our own minds, some of the bad thoughts that we have sometimes that um, my mother told me once, I remember, and this, this was so profound, uh, she says, never say anything privately that, that you would be ashamed or embarrassed if it was uh, made public. And uh, I've, tried to, I've tried to live by that because I know that, uh, well, there's actually some people that uh, actually you have, think you have a private conversation and people are recording it to try to expose you. <laughs> we, we, there are people like that I know on YouTube. But I, uh, I've always tried to do that. Um, but I know uh, I'm guilty, and I hope everybody can admit that, that we're all guilty of having thoughts that we're, we're probably ashamed of. I've, I've been ashamed of a lot of things I've done in my life, but it's my problem now is not the actions. I was telling Matthias this the other day. I, I hope uh, I better. I don't know if I should say this exactly as I said it because um, there may, I wonder if there's any children listening this time of night. But I, I've heard people say that uh, when they had an affair, an adulterous affair, and their excuse was, well, it just happened. And I always thought, no, it never just happens. And, you know, slipping on a banana peel and falling on your butt is something that just happens. But you don't slip on a banana peel and fall down and find out that you're in coitus with uh, with someone. So I, um, that's the cleanest way I could express that. But uh, you, uh, in order for that to happen, there's a whole series of doors you have to go through. There has to be first be a, a, a look, a, 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 a curiosity, a look, and then and then and then a smile, and then a flirt, and conversation, and then plans, and then. The, uh, the actions, each step along the way, we have an opportunity to, to stop and not go through that next door. So th these, these bad actions, um, there are spontaneous things we do where we just, for me, uh, sometimes I'll lose my temper and, and get angry. And, and, and um, of course, Jesus 
says if you're angry at someone, it's the same as if you hate them and get angry in that way. It's you've committed murder in your mind and your heart. You, you feel like killing someone sometimes you get so angry. Um, so my struggles now are not so much actually doing something that I know I shouldn't do. Uh, because as I said, it's usually a series of steps you go through before you have to, you finally do that. My problem is impulsive things that, that happen. It's uh, just a reaction, emotional reaction that I regret or thoughts that I wish I'd never thought. I so have a story. Confession, Brother Cripps. Go ahead, Lisa. Oh, okay, pardon me. Uh, when you said about losing your temper and, and getting angry and uh, how the Lord deals with you about that. And, um, several years ago, a family member and I got into a heated discussion. And I, I got so angry. I walked out of the room we were in and I walked into my bedroom, closed the door, probably slammed it. And I was so angry, but I was trying desperately not to curse. And, you know, I didn't want to, I was, but I was that angry. And I'm looking around, I wanted to punch a pillow or something. And there was nothing for me to grab. And I walked in my bathroom and I was clenching my fists and clenching my teeth. And right then I was, I was quiet. And as I looked for something to say, the Holy Spirit said, show her the same grace that I have shown you. Now, what was amazing to me with that one statement, all of my anger literally melted away. And at that moment, <laughs> praise God, I, I said, OK, Lord, you know, what can you say when Jesus says forgive and he's forgiven all that you've done? You, you can't look at somebody and say, you know, I mean, you could do it, but you really don't have any cause. You don't have a leg to stand on. So I said, OK, Lord, she's angry at me. What do I do? What do I do to fix this situation? Because I said some things I shouldn't have said with my big mouth too. And the Lord said, give her a peace offering. And so I thought about it that evening. I was actually on my way to work. I worked nights at the time. And I prepared something for her and I left it on the stove. And I wrote a letter and I said, I apologize for every ugly thing I said. I was wrong. Please forgive me. Here's a peace offering. And I put the scripture for them. Then I, I went out the door. The next morning when I came in from work, she, who is a throwdown cook, by the way, <laughs> had prepared something for me that was just amazing. It was, it was the morning, but it was my dinner time. And so I had this beautiful dinner prepared for me. She left the note and it said, uh, I forgive you. Forgive me for my part. Here's my peace offering. And so we were able to hug and make up and just say, you know, we squashed that and put it behind us. But when the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, show her the same grace that I've shown you. That's what has continued since that moment forward. I meditate on that. I constantly think about that when I go places and I get impatient because they're not moving fast enough or whatever to show grace to show kindness, to make sure I let the light of Christ shine and like rein myself back in. No, 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 no. That's not how we're going to conduct ourselves. That's not how we're going to behave. We're going to exhibit Christ at this moment. And it really has helped me throughout these years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is wonderful to, to, to feel that um, um, some of the things that we did naturally uh, uh, it's no longer natural for us. Uh, our, our, the desires, and uh, I, I told this story before, so if you've heard it, I'm sorry, but uh, a friend of mine was talking about, who's known me since high school, was talking about all the amazing changes, and I'm so absolutely, totally different than he knew me in high school. And another friend of mine said, kept saying to him, yeah, it doesn't seem natural, does it? <laughs> My friend didn't get the get what he was trying to say. He kept repeating it. Yeah, it's not natural. And the point, and then I finally told him. I said, Rick, what he's trying to tell you is that the changes in me are supernatural. It's it's uh, God has changed my mind. As a matter of fact, I found out recently from Malcolm Smith video. Uh, he's talking about the word repent, and all of us like to say repent means to it's a change of mind, and he says it's it's an exchange of mind 
and it's uh, I think it's 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 expanding that not only do we change our mind about who Jesus is and how we get saved, but our minds are chain, exchanged for the mind of Christ, and that uh, we're in agreement. Let's be in agreement with Christ, and of course that's what we want to do. And uh, but I said this. Paul says there's this battle between the old man and the new man that goes on it, and it, uh, it's, it, it's a struggle. And that's why we need to learn and practice surrendering our will over to the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is trying to uh, uh, renew our minds, uh, make our minds in agreement with the mind of Christ. And uh, uh, what will you do, though? What will you do with the Holy Spirit? I, I say, what will you do with Jesus before you get saved? After you're saved, I said, what will you do with the Holy Spirit? Will you continue to grieve the Spirit and, and uh, tune out, tune it out and quench the Spirit? Or will you embrace the promptings of the Spirit, surrender your wills, and allow the Holy Spirit to renew your mind? It's, it's wonderful what, when I can recognize in myself, and Lisa, you've recognized that. I hope everybody recognizes that the Holy Spirit is changing us. Paul, uh, Paula V, Paula V, uh, tell us, has there been some kind of renewal, renewing of your mind uh, that you can recognize? Yeah, I really liked when you said uh, exchange, because it isn't just me on my best behavior. Um, something has taken over in my mind and my heart to where the things I used to say, the way I used to be, is so distasteful to me now that when I see myself behaving that way, slipping back into it, um, I'm not comfortable anymore. Um, it's like the longer I walk with God, the stronger my spirit gets and uh, the uglier my flesh gets and I'm able to um, recognize between the two. But yeah, there's definitely definitely been a change and it wasn't instantaneous and it just keeps going i don't think he's ever done with us until we're called home and the more he works out in me I, i'm even shocked sometimes at where my mind will go it's so when something happens it's so far from what was once natural to me and now it's, I know it's from God because um, it's not how I would have ever been before. So yeah, um, there's definitely an exchange, uh, not just doing the opposite of what you used to do or saying the opposite of what you used to say. It's um, he's speaking through you now and living his, living life through you. Like it's a joint effort or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. I, you know, a lot of times when I say, let's get a praise report and we want to, we think that we need to uh, just uh, focus on what God does for us in terms of uh, satisfying some need like uh, a health need or a financial need or something. But, but to just get this uh, desire to sin it, 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 it taken out of our mind, our mind cleansed, and now our mind is desiring Bible and Jesus and fellowship, and, and our mind is not on sin when we recognize that God has changed us so much. Obviously, we're not perfected, but he's changed us so much that, that we should be constantly giving praise reports and thanks for that. Um, but Brother Dave? Can you uh, tell us about what's happened in your life? Can you, do you recognize any changes? And did you have you tried to work at it, or did you just allow the Holy Spirit to work on you? No, just just allowing the Holy Spirit to work on me as I rest in the finished works of Christ. It's uh, you know I always tend to find out that when I try to you know push through in my own willpower and my own strength. Uh, you know, the rug eventually always gets pulled out from under you. So I just learned to rest in him and, and take it one day at a time. I literally just put one foot in front of the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, yeah, that's, you know, it's it's a blessing to uh, I like how you brought up the point where, you know, you're far, far from where you'd like to be. But when you look back, um, you see that you're also far, far from who you used to be. And you can 
you know, see the hand of God, you know, working in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, Sister Paula, you've been listening. Uh, do, do you have, uh, can you give us any account of your experience and the Holy Spirit working on you? Yeah, I think for me, it's been a longer, slower process. Um, nothing drastic happens, you know, usually it, it's just very slow and something that you look back on, not something you see coming. And uh, I can say that the most um, obvious was when I mentioned when you interviewed me when I was about 15 and, you know, just, just handed over my life as, you know, already having been a believer, but now as a all out disciple. And I was given this thirst for the Bible that never left me. So, and I know that was a gift because it wasn't there before. And it was, that was about the most sudden thing I can think of, the most obvious thing. The rest has been just gradual lessons that are taught over and over again until I finally get it, I guess. And uh, one, of course, is uh, just stepping out of the comfort zone and talking because I'm, I'm a writer. I don't necessarily like to talk, but somehow I was drag kicking and screaming into that realm. So <laughs> this, is, this is going to be different for everybody, I think, as far as, as seeing God move in your life. It's, it's just going to be tailored to the person, I think. That's just how God works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've made the point many times about how uh, the, the lordship uh, heresy, they, they tend to, uh, one, they don't recognize their, their faults. They pretend and are, they're deluded to think that they've, they've already been made perfect. Now, we know we've been made perfect in our standing before God. Uh, we have the robe of righteousness, but uh, um, the, the lordship heretic, they can't even consider that there's still sin in their life, and so they feel they're free to point the finger at everybody else and and uh, so on. But they don't... Um, um, I forgot why I was saying that. But let, let me... Let me I'll probably think of it in a minute, but let's uh, let me ask Brother Cripps. Uh, we've talked about how we read the Bible, we study the Bible, and Sister Paula said that she, at a very young age, she knows that she was uh, God's directed her to really dig into the Bible and study it. All of us have studied it to varying degrees, but how about the people? that they don't seem to ever develop a great interest in the Bible. Uh, and, and yet, they they seem to love Jesus. They seem to understand the gospel and believe it. They seem to, uh, you know, be, they're convinced that they do have eternal life, as we do. And yet, they never develop this love and passion for Bible study. What, what, what would you say? Do you think that that's very common or... What would you say? Would you draw any conclusions about that, Brother Cripps? What a great question. Um, yes, Ooh, I, good one. Yes, I think it's common. I think it's very common, and I think people get all twisted up about it too. Um, his word says meditate. He tells us to meditate on his word day and night, and I, I, I think that has to be defined what that means. I mean, there's the idea of someone you know, like sitting at a desk with the Bible open and, and taking notes down and, and uh, being, in, being in the Word constantly and uh, not doing anything else, uh, but uh, focusing in on the Word. And that there's so many ways, I think, this is just my interpretation of it, but meditating on uh, His Word means thinking about Him, talking to Him, um, thinking about what He says in it, and uh, and mulling it over and, and thinking about it constantly throughout the day. You can do it at work. You can do it in your car. You can talk to him and, uh, and, and read his word back to him and uh, see what he has to say to you. It's having a relationship with him, meditating on his word. Um, some people have trouble uh, just sitting down and, and reading, reading the Bible. Would I draw any conclusions? Um, 
I, I think the first thing I would say to someone like that is, uh, first of all, I would take that to the father directly and, and, and uh, bring the problem up to him and say, I, I love you. As you said, Brother Luke, you know, I, I believe in you. Um, but I'm having a tr uh, have, having trouble understanding, or I'm having trouble um, uh, sitting down with your with your word for for uh, long periods of time. Help me with that. Um, I think that's all that's necessary, and the Holy Spirit will help uh, that person. And I believe too, when someone becomes a new believer, a lot of times there's a honeymoon period where they're just excited. They want to they want to read the word all the time. Um, you know, sometimes that levels out. I think a lot of times that levels out and then people get afraid. They're like, well, I didn't have that, that feeling that I had at the beginning, or I, I you know, I didn't, uh, I don't focus on his word as much as I used to. And it freaks people out. You know, they want it. They, they get the idea and they hear from other, other believers sometimes the way they talk about an experience that someone has, that they should feel that all the time. They should have a mountaintop experience every day of the rest of their Christian life. And that's that's not been the case for me. Um, I have days that I feel really, really close to God. I have other days that I don't feel uh, as close. But the, the thing is, I know that he hasn't gone anywhere. I know that he is ever present with, with his children. And um, I make uh, attempts every day to get into his word and to talk to him and to meditate on it. Um, but he certainly understands if a, a brother or sister uh, that really is saved, uh, they don't have the same hunger uh, for reading his word. But I believe that he helps us through that. And over time, we can develop a thirst. We can develop a hunger to, uh, to greedily uh, read his word and to meditate on it. And I think it's just a matter of maturity a lot of times. I think, I think the more mature we are in Christ, the more we know that reading his word helps us. It, it, it connects us more to him and to other other people. Um, and it's something that we uh, begin to focus on. And lastly, um, I, I would try not to draw any conclusions uh, about the person. I would just help him walk through it and um, just encourage him, you know, not not make a big point out of it and not, not uh, get in their face about it, but just encourage them to take it to God. All right, thanks. I, I want to ask Brother uh, brother Dave uh, the same question about uh, should you or could you draw any conclusions based upon a person having the right confession of faith but never developing this great love and interest in the, studying the Bible? And then that doesn't matter whether they're reading it or listening to it uh, to the chat room. I know that you can hear it on audio uh, or read it, uh, but there's no interest in the Bible can you and should you draw any conclusions and also uh interesting question let me see i got to find it again here um i had a feeling i had a feeling you were going to call on me for this one luke <laughs> yeah uh there's a let me see someone said something in the chat room that oh yeah robert wigman w-i-e-g-m-a-n hi robert welcome i i don't recognize the name so if you're here for the first time, welcome. And uh, he, Robert wrote, uh, there's a fear of reading slash hearing scriptures that contradict what one already thinks. Ah, that's, I think this is a very profound point. Uh, is that clear, the, the point he's making there? And what's your thoughts on that? And also the question that I asked, Brother Dave. Well, to answer Robert's point, it's very possible that some people may avoid it because they don't quite understand as brother Cripp said, you know, they may not, you know, they may get frustrated by not being able to understand or, you know, well, I'm just going to play the, the mean big brother on this one. I'm going to take the opposite approach of brother Cripps on this one. And I'm going to try to kick people in their rear end in a loving fashion and say, please read your Bibles. If you don't, if you're not good at reading, you don't have the time or the patience to sit down. Then plug in your earphones. You got to get the Word of God inside of you. John seventeen seventeen says, "Sanctify them, O Lord, with Thy truth. Thy Word is truth." We've got to feed our spirit the Word of God, or else it's going to shrivel up and be so weak. And I, and you know, if we if we lack wisdom, 
You know, God says he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We, we ask him graciously to give us understanding and wisdom. And James 1, 5 says he'll give it to us graciously. I advocate you got to be in your word. You, you cannot. The word is your sword. You can't go into a spiritual battle swinging a stick. You need a sharp sword. And the only way to get it sharp is to get in that word. We got to get that word. The Bible says, right, may I write your word upon my heart that I may not sin against you. We, we need to know that word. And so, you know, we're not always motivated. I get it. We get busy. We get caught up. We get frustrated. We're not always motivated. So we have to be dedicated. And there's nothing more, in my opinion, there's nothing more vital to your relationship with God than to digging in his word. It's endless, precious revelations and understandings and upliftings and promises and you just got to get in that word. That's my opinion on it. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, I want to ask Sister Paula V the same thing uh, and also introduce this idea, Paula. Uh, um, you know, we, we take a lot of things for granted, as I keep saying, but, you know, we all have access to the Bible. I've got many Bibles in my bookshelf. I've got these Bible programs online, a Bible Gateway uh, and others. And uh, so we're so fortunate to have this uh, accessible, but it wasn't until the, the Gutenberg press was invented that uh, the, the scriptures became available to the public. Uh, pretty much all, almost no one had access to scriptures before then. So um, uh, we, can, we can better understand a person uh, not getting into the scriptures if they didn't have access. But now that everybody has so much access, it's the number one best-selling book of all time. And uh, so there's no excuse for not having access and, and taking advantage of it. So can you draw a conclusion if a believer doesn't develop an, a great interest and passion for the Bible? And also this point that Robert Wigman makes, uh, he says, there is a fear of reading or hearing scriptures that contradict what one already thinks. I think he's saying that people are afraid to go in the scriptures of the, the they're going to see something in the scriptures that will trouble them, contradicting what they're already believing. Paula V. Um, yeah, that's a very good point. Um, that that might be why people don't read their Bibles, and there really is no excuse for not reading it. I mean, even if you're not a good reader, there's apps that you can get that read the Bible to you. They just read it plainly, or you can put it on drama. Um, it has music and stuff and different people speaking in the background so you can differentiate. There's really no reason why anyone who says that they're a believer should not have it as their goal to read the entire Bible, regardless if you're going to understand any of it or not. And you're going to not understand a great portion of it. That's not really the point. The point is to get it in your head because you have like your head's a computer and you have files and there's uh, let me see the scripture. Uh, John 14, 26 talks about the Holy Ghost being able to bring all things to remembrance. But if you have no knowledge of it, he can't really bring it back to your memory. So just reading it through, regardless if it parts are boring, regardless if you don't understand any of it, don't let it frustrate you. It's designed so that you can't understand it without God. And you're not going to understand all of it and you're not going to understand all of it right away. Mm -hmm. But I think that everybody who hasn't read the Bible all the way through can make it their goal to do that. Just a little bit a day, you know, a chapter a day, or I think it's like if you read three chapters a day going by chapters, it would take you a year to read it. And that should be everybody's goal if they, if they haven't done it. Um, and when Cripps was talking about uh, meditating on God's word, I think of the sheep, you know, we're, we're sheep to his being our shepherd. And the way that a sheep eats, he, he eats his food and then he goes and relaxes so that he could uh, bring the food back up and chew on it and he swallows it again. And then he brings it back up and he chews on it and he swallows it again. And 
spiritually speaking, the food is the word of God. And this is, I think, what God is showing us, how we're supposed to meditate on it, is to have it in our head and, you know, roll it around and then swallow it and then bring it back up again. And that's how uh, he gives us understanding. Um, if we continually eat constantly and don't have time to relax and think about what we've read, um, I don't think that's really the way that he would have us do because he, he likens us to a sheep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, we've talked about, um, you know, reading the Bible or listening to the Bible and how available it is. If you don't have a Bible, contact us. And I'm sure we can get a Bible to you. You can also go to any local church and probably say you'd like to have a Bible and they'll probably give you one. And they're also very inexpensive to buy. Um, some people don't like to read. It's it's maybe their vision or, or they have some problem with reading. So you can listen to it. If you have a smartphone, you can just simply talk to the Google, say, Google, uh, play, uh, you know, John chapter one. And you're making it's that it's that easy, and it'll start you know playing it for you, and you know get somebody else has read read the, and you're listening to them, so it's just so easy. But the thing that I love so much is that uh, uh, to me it's exciting to uh, get some people call them a nugget. Nugget is something a, a great truth that you get suddenly, uh, or I, I call it an epiphany. Uh, I, you just finally something becomes clear to you. It's a new, it's a realization and an understanding. And, and sometimes we read the Bible over and over and over, and maybe we've read the same verse before five, 10, 20 times. And then that particular time, there's a revelation from God and you get something that you didn't, you see the truth or you see something in it that you never saw before. And it's so profound and it's such a, such a great joy to have these these moments. And that's what we have. That's why we read the Bible over and over and over again, year after year, decade after decade, never losing, uh, it never loses its appeal to, to us. Uh, Sister Lisa, you know, give me your thoughts on, on this subject. Yeah, I was just thinking about uh, what you guys were saying. Just a couple of things that I would add that might be helpful to people who are struggling with getting into the Word. Um, the first is pray before you attempt to read the Bible and ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you into all truth. The second thing is that I would suggest is that remember wh what your position is in Christ, that you have sonship that you are a child of the king so that if you read some difficult passages um, do the third thing that I that I suggest which is put it on the shelf you may not find an answer that day or the next or even the next be patient to allow the Lord to bring you to an understanding in that area and it may take a while but be patient come back to it another time pray about it uh, seek the Lord search the scriptures but sometimes we just have to put things on the shelf and you'll be surprised how you'll hear the very thing that you were seeking the lord for a minister a brother and sister that you start talking to or something and they'll share a revelation with you on that and as brother luke was just saying it's like you know the the uh, switch flips and the holy spirit shows you something there and you can you can actually cross that one off your list and, and move on to something else. Not that you ever never go back and compare things just to make sure that you have a right understanding, but there's not this gnawing at you to have an answer about a certain thing. So one is to be patient, be prayerful, understand your position. So if you get in a difficult path, you'd be like, I know I can't lose my salvation. That can't be saying what I think it says. And then seek the Lord for the deeper meaning and the deeper understanding. Read the context. Um, that's, that's one principle. They say that you should at least read maybe the 20 verses before or the 20 verses after. Sometimes it needs to be even more than that. And you need to remember, particularly in the, in the, in the New Covenant, when we see these letters, 
None of this was laid out with chapters and verses. That's for our convenience. So what you're looking at is one letter. And sometimes you may need to read the whole thing to get the full understanding. But just to be patient, give yourself time. The Holy Spirit's not done with you. And as you start reading the word, sometimes it's kind of like a, a dinner that you ate and you weren't really sure if you liked it or not. But then you tried it again, and then you were like, oh, yeah, I can taste some other flavors. And, you know, this is kind of growing on me. And before you know it, it becomes one of your favorites. Sometimes the Word of God is like that. Because if you have a, a fear and a trepidation about, well, I don't know what I'm doing kind of thing, the devil just going to try to use that to keep you away from the Word. Because so critically important is the Word of God that Jesus said when he, when he likened it unto uh, sowers sowing seed and he talked about how some landed on rough ground and some landed on good soil and, and some got scattered and he, he said but immediately the devil comes to steal the word so it is very important that you pray ask the Lord to lead you and guide you he will direct you and just be confident in your position in Christ you know like I always say people don't seem to get this connotation and you need to get it in your head that Christ is like a house and when you fall you don't fall outside the house you fall inside the house so you are secure you are positionally secure in Christ and just move forward trust in him he'll lead you and guide you thank you amen uh, all right uh, out of respect for those living on the East Coast we're gonna wind it down now uh, but uh, well, the last thing I'll say about the Bible, studying the Bible subject, um, going back to a point I made at the very beginning of our talk t tonight, is that um, this this Bible is so full of truth, and yet we don't really have to understand everything in this Bible. Uh, no one, I don't think, ever has understood everything except God himself. Uh, but... Uh, I'm not saying understanding at all is not important, but it's not essential that we get everything right. But so that I believe that uh, we need to understand who Jesus is and how do we get saved. And the place to go for that uh, is the Gospel of John. Um, the first chapter of John um, tells us who Jesus is, and the rest of the book is dedicated to teaching us, you know, how we get salvation by faith alone in Christ alone so that's the place to you need to get that right and, and then everything else it's a, a lifetime of study and uh, trying to get it right but uh, don't don't ever think that you're gonna be omniscient or infallible um, let's take a minute now just to see if anything want anybody in the chat room all the Saints in the chat room if you have uh, a comment or a question that you want us to respond to here in the end now is the time put it in all caps right now and uh we can take a minute to try to address your question or your point of view uh and let's uh take some time now for each of us to kind of give up a, a summary thoughts on on the time we spent together tonight uh, let me start with uh, uh, sister paula um yeah just in general i think what we uh, are been what everybody's been saying is that yes the bible is i mean it's the the basis for our teachings and everybody should be familiar with it but god sends teachers and guides and elders for reasons and we're not all the same part but at the very least i do think that every christian should at least be hearing it you know because there's no sense in having teachers if there's no students and uh, whether it's reading or not, whether it's digging deep into it or not, just to at least keep hearing the basics of the word at the very least and how we're supposed to relate. I mean, I, I don't think that's too much to ask for most, you know, for, for any believers, if this is seriously what their life is about, then you would think they would want to know something about um, how to how to relate to other believers. So I, I think it's a really important topic. Um, and we all think everybody should understand or, or have the same 
focus that we have, but it just isn't going to be that way, but we can try to encourage it and uh, just, you know, be there. Each of us encourage people to use their gifts, whatever they are. Okay. All right. Thanks. Uh, and, and I know Paula, you, you and um, Lisa had a hard time getting that link and, and accessing the program tonight. Hopefully we'll get better at uh, that in the future and it'll be easy for you to access it. I'm thankful that you were able to make it work and, and join us, um, brother. Brother Dave, I'm, I'm working my down the down the row here, and you're you're next. So, so uh, kind of give me a little summary of your uh, your your opinion and your thoughts on our uh, time tonight. Well, it's another great Fellowship Friday. Uh, you know, a lot of good input from the panel, and uh, especially uh, Sister Paula V had a lot of good stuff to say. Brother Cripps, as always, Sister Lisa was a pleasure. And Sister Paula, you, Brother Luke, everybody, I appreciate you having me tonight. Um, you know, I had a lot of people in the chat gathered in, and, you know, it was a lot of good um, good discussion on, on, you know, we got through several different things tonight, and a lot of good points brought up, a lot of good praise reports, going to continue to just uh, keep each other in prayer and, you know, get through this next week, you know, with our head up. Yes, yes, amen, thank you. Thank you for being with us tonight, Brother Dave. And uh, Sister Lisa, tell us what you think of the time, the fellowship tonight. Oh, it was wonderful. I mean, it's always a blessing to fellowship with other saints of God and get uh, to hear other people's thoughts on certain passages of scripture that may provide deeper insight. I love it when I learn a little something or glean a little something from someone else that helps broaden my understanding about the word of God. Um, you know, it's really nice for people who may be living outskirts, living in an area where they're not able to attend church. Maybe they have health reasons why they can't attend and it might be more difficult for them. So this is a wonderful time that we can come and and should be a safe zone i think and i and i believe it is for people that are in the chat and even here on the panel to discuss things that might be of an issue or concern as well as offer praise reports giving an honor to king jesus and it's just wonderful it's been a blessing to me and i look forward to it with uh with great um anticipation and i thank all of you and god bless all of you in the chat all right thank you sister lisa and now sister paula v what 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 was this experience and like for you tonight and uh, uh you will you also look forward to it yes uh it was great um i i really enjoyed like lisa said hearing other people's um opinions about stuff and i think it's wonderful when uh true grace believers can all get together and and get along and share um, our thoughts and, and troubles with one another. Um, and I did want to say what, what Lisa had said before about um, someone reading the Bible and coming across some of these problem verses. I mean, that's, it was spot on. It was wonderful. Um, praying to God before you even start reading the Bible. And then when you get to some of these, uh, verses that make it seem like there's some sort of works involved um just remind yourself that you would have to throw away dozens and dozens of other verses that clearly say salvation is by grace through faith and those uh verses are actually stumbling stones they're put in there by design and if anyone's looking to have any glory whatsoever in their salvation those are the verses that they'll use um, but there is deeper meaning to it. And I just encourage everybody, like Brother Dave said, um, to read your Bible and go there first, go to God first before anything. And yes, I look forward to uh, the next time you invite me. This was wonderful. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you for being with us. I, I enjoyed your company very much. And uh, I am trying to keep in mind that fellowship friday is for fellowship and and that's why i'm trying to focus on 
uh, making the subject uh, of our conversation. Um, what is on our minds? Uh, do we have any problems that we need? We can help each other with, and any praise reports to encourage uh, each other. And uh, so, I, I think that's a good uh, kind of format uh, because I, I really felt we had good fellowship tonight. And you know, a lot of people they don't understand the difference between fellowship and friendship. And uh, I, I have a lot of friends that I've known for many years who are not believers. But no matter how much I care about them and love them, uh, unless they share this common faith we have, uh, it, I could never consider my time with them as fellowship. Um, but we have something uh, in addition to being friends. We're, we're in the family of God. And, uh, and we, we, we share this love for Jesus and this love for the scriptures. We're the kind of people that on a Friday night, instead of going out and doing the things that the world wants to do and the things that many of us did in the past, our Friday nights, the most fun we can have on a Friday night is coming together and talking about Jesus and the Bible. So thanks to everybody for joining us tonight in the chat room. And uh, Darlene, can we, can we lead out in prayer? Uh, Yes, uh, but I'll ask uh, someone else to, to lead the prayer. Uh, uh, if you want to say a short prayer uh, as we say goodnight, let me just say to everybody that uh, uh, don't forget to join us on Sunday uh, for the uh, Church of the Eternally Secure Sunday service. It begins at 5 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, so uh, I'll ask for a volunteer on the panel to just uh, take a moment of prayer uh, requested by Darlene. Share, share it. Uh, who who would like to pray for a moment? Good night, everybody. Okay. Good night, Brother Cripps. Good night, Brother Cripps. Okay. All right. Uh, no I'll volunteers. Pray. I'll pray. Yeah. There's no problem. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Sister Lisa. Okay, Abba Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you tonight, thanking you for this wonderful time of fellowship that we had with one another. We thank you and praise you for the insights that were provided. We thank you and praise you for leading us and guiding us into all truth as always. And we ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that everyone be protected with your hedge of protection and with your warrior angels throughout this week as they go down the highways and byways, as they go to work and from work, protect them and keep them, Lord. And we thank you that we'll come again, uh, come again together in fellowship next week to give praise and honor and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you for that. And everybody agree with that prayer? Say amen. 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 Uh, now I'm wondering, uh, as I'm asking everybody to summarize their thoughts about the time tonight, did I forget Brother Cripps again? I mean, I routinely forget to call on him. And did I give him an opportunity to summarize his thoughts? I'm, if I didn't, Brother, I apologize. Yeah, I don't think he. Uh, I don't think he said anything. Yeah. Okay, Brother, if you're listening, I apologize. I don't know why I do that, but uh, is there anybody else I, I neglected to? call on for your last thought final thoughts okay all right thanks everybody bless you all in the name of our great savior god jesus